Thank you to Mayoral Candidates Forum. My name is Bart Blackwell, and I am the board chairman of the Aiken Chamber of Commerce and will be your moderator this evening. On behalf of the Aiken Chamber and the Aiken Young Professionals, I want to thank you folks for your attendance this evening and ask that you join me in welcoming our two candidates, Ms. Leslie Price and Mr. Rick Osmond. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us this evening to answer questions from our two groups. The questions that will be asked at this forum were submitted by members of the Chamber of Commerce and the Aiken Young Professionals. We will do our best to get to as many of the questions as possible in the time allotted. Tonight I am joined by a panel of four individuals representing both the Aiken Chamber and the Aiken Young Professionals and ask that our panelists please take a moment and introduce yourselves to the audience. Fran, would you like to start? Thanks, Bart. Hello, my name is Fran Jones, and I am the incoming chair of the Aiken Chamber of Commerce, and I will have the privilege of being the first chair. Oh, well, I can't get to my microphone if I stand up. I'll stand up when I finish introducing myself. So uh, I will be the first chair to work with the new mayor, so I'm looking forward to whoever it may be, and uh, thank you for both being here today. Thank you. And, and now I'll stand up. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Charlie Hartz, and I'm currently the Vice Chair of Public Affairs for the Chamber. Uh, next year, I will be the Chair-Elect, and in 2017, I will uh, take over for Fran, who's going to do a great job. Thank you. you stand up. Uh, stand up. <laughs> Hello, I'm Eric Brinkley. I'm the Chair of the, I'm the 2015 Chair for Aiken Young Professionals, an organization of 250 plus individuals between the ages of 22 and 39. Good evening. I'm Dr. Melencia Johnson. I have been a member of the Aiken Young Professionals, Professionals since 2013, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to ask questions tonight that are important to young professionals. Thank you all. Joining the panelists tonight are two of the Aiken Chamber uh, professional staff. We have Diane Phillips, Vice President of Administration, who will be keeping us all on time this evening, and Melissa Viola, Information Services Coordinator, who will be keeping track of the procedures. Now, before we begin, we have a few procedures and ground rules to review. We will start tonight with each candidate providing a two-minute introduction. Then we will begin asking the questions from the panel. Each candidate will be allowed two minutes to answer each question. Candidates, you will be given a one minute notice, a 30 second notice, and a stop signal from Diane. Since this is a forum and not a debate, both candidates will respond to every question and we will alternate who goes first each time. As a reminder, this is a forum and not a debate. Answers should be directed to the panel and to the audience, not to each other. We have one simple request this evening of the audience. This is a professional event, and we ask that you exhibit appropriate decorum. In order to get through as many questions as possible this evening, please hold your applause until the very end of the program. We will have time then to express our appreciation to the candidates. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. And one other point, please uh, check your cell phones, make sure they are off or on vibrate, if you don't mind. Thank you. It's time to get started. First, with the introductions. Backstage, about 10 minutes ago, we flipped a coin to see who would go first, and Mr. Osborn won the toss, and he elected to go first with his uh, introduction. So, Mr. Osborn, if you would uh, lead us off this evening. Sure. Thank you, Bart. I'd like to thank the Aiken Chamber of Commerce and the Aiken Young Professionals for hosting this event today. Uh, I'd also like to thank each of you for coming out and being here. And for those of you who will watch it probably 60 plus times on the Aiken channel, thank you also. I grew up in Aiken, South Carolina. I went to Aiken High School, then to USC Aiken. After that, I, started, I went into work at our family business, Osmond's Cleaners. Our cleaners was started in 1948 by my father, who's here tonight, and his father. They did not have a promise of success, but they did have the promise of opportunity. At USC Aiken, I not only got a degree in, in business management, but I also met my wife, my better half, who's here tonight, Angie. Glad you're here. My son Reagan is with her. And yes, it is spelled R-E-A-G-A-N. Angie and I have three children. And the truth is that they're the real reason why I'm running 
for this office. You see, I want them to have the opportunity and the promise of opportunity to fulfill their dreams, just like my parents, just like my father and his father did when they started the business. I want the students at USC Aiken, when they get their degree, and when they get the degree from Aiken Technical College down the road, to have that same promise of opportunity that we have. If elected mayor, I have a, a simple plan. It's a four-step plan. First, oppose tax increases. Secondly, work diligently for economic, e economic development. Third, improve safety on our streets. And fourth, speaking of streets, the condition of our streets and our infrastructure. Work to make sure our infrastructure is taken care of, our infrastructure needs, and our streets meet the quality that the, the citizens here deserve. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you, Mr. Osmond. Ms. Price, introduction, <coughs> please. I am Leslie Price, and I am running for Mayor of Aiken. I, too, want to thank the people that are in the audience, the Aiken Chamber, and the young professionals for putting on this forum. I'm from a small town called Blackpool, South Carolina. My parents had 10 children. I grew up on a farm. Cotton was king where I grew up. My parents didn't have very much education, but they taught us values and what values bring. And they taught us to work for a living and work hard for a living. And if you've lived on a farm, you've worked hard for a living and picked cotton. I started my early, general, uh, my, my early journey in high school, in, in elementary school, a neighboring church-related school. Later, my father wanted a better way of life for his family and moved to Aiken, and we moved on a the farm there. William and I have five sons, and those five sons are right here in this town. And the reason that I am running is because I want a greater future for our five sons and many other children that live in this community. I have 40 years of experience working at Savannah Riverside, and I want to make a difference in people's lives and the importance of the things that it brings value to them. I am convinced that by working together, we can make our city greater. I was the part of the team to bring, make a difference in Aiken many, many years ago. We had 13 storefronts, and I'm looking forward to being a part of that team to make a greater difference in Aiken. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Price. Now it's time to get started with our questions that were submitted. Fran, would you please start us off? All right, we'll be alternating order. So Mr. Osborne, you go first this, for this question. Uh, if elected, how will you improve the environment for business growth and expansion in Aiken? Thank you, Fran. As a small business owner, I know how important it is that Government does not interfere with business. I think, I think the most important thing we can do is first of all revamp our city government so that we are actually helping businesses as opposed to putting regulations and things and policies in place that are holding them back. Um, my plan, first of all, if elected, one of the first things I would do would be to put a committee together of community leaders and business owners and business leaders to review our policies so that we would be a more business friendly community so that we can allow our employees to do the things that they would like to do and not hold them back by restraining policies. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Price, the same question. If elected, how will you improve the environment for business and growth, business growth and expansion in Aiken? One of the greatest challenges in our, in our community is having adequate communications. We don't bring our businesses around the table enough to have the discussion. First thing I would do would be to bring the businesses in this town together, as many as possible. We've heard enough over and over about the challenges that they are facing. And let me just say, to give credit to our staff, our staff is doing a very good job. But there are a lot of regulations and rules that we can change, and we're doing that as we speak. So certainly hearing from them, uh, getting our business input, but also we have business leaders in this town that we can hear from as well. We're constantly working on process improvement. Nothing is perfect. And let me just say that having the experience, I know what's required uh, in terms of leading with 28 years, 
And I think we can be, become successful by bringing these people in the room and talking and then setting out a plan uh, to make these changes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Price. Uh, you both attended the Aspirational <laughs> Cities Tour with the Chamber and many people in this room. What is your number one takeaway from the trip? Please be specific. Clearly, when the people returned, they, the 48, was very excited, and they're still excited, and that excitement is spilling over into the community. The first thing is working together, but coming up with a, a strategic plan as well. Secondly, we must grow our city. We've said it over and over, without growth, the city dies. We need things to attract our millennials and have them remain here, but we also need to grow our businesses here, and I have a plan to do that. Mr. Osmond, same question. You both attended the Aspirational Cities Tour. What is your number one takeaway from the trip? Please be specific. Certainly. Thank you, Charlie. I think all 48 people who attended that, that trip in that, those three days were really moved, and I think they did come back with an excitement um, for what we saw. We saw in Greenville how they made a plan around the Reedy River and how they developed their downtown. We saw in Winston-Salem how they used a redevelopment process to take a downtown that was nothing and they built it back up. And then in, in Raleigh, uh, you know, the synergy that they had between NC State and, and the uh, business incubator that we went to, where it was, it was focused around the millennials, it was focused around tech. It was exciting. One thing I, I took away, though, was that they built around their resources that they had. They, they built around their communities, and they took those resources and they built a plan around it. I think right now with the excitement that was generated from that trip, what I'm most excited about is that I think Aiken is at a point where the next leader and the next mayor will lead that plan for the future of our city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Osmond, as mayor, how do you plan to engage the young professionals? How can we work to have more young professionals involved on the council and committee levels in Aiken. Sure. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'll just say if elected, I'll be the youngest person on city council. How's that for a start? <laughs> no, no. Um, listen, it, it's, it's, a great, it's a great question. We have to engage our millennials. When I was first elected on the county council, I was 38 at, at the time, but I had served on at least three committees up to that point. So I felt like I was prepared for that opportunity. We have to do that here. We have to look at it. I mean, we have young professionals. It's, we say they're, for the, they're the future, and, and yes, that's true, but, but they're today. I mean, they're, they're business owners. They're making a difference in our economy. And absolutely, I, I think the Young Professionals is a great organ, organization that, and a great place to draw from, but we have to plug young professionals in the city. Uh, into those positions to train them so that they can be the leaders that, that I know they can be. Thank you, Rick. Ms. Price, as mayor, how do you plan to engage the young professionals? How can we work to have more young professionals involved on the council and committee levels in Aiken? We have many talented young professionals in our town. We can get them involved early by including them on boards and commissions. We can also help them get involved with meeting with them regular, more regularly than we are. There is a group that is ready to assemble, and it is a political group made up of different, different uh, ethnicity who want to prepare themselves as the next generations of, generation of leaders. Our young professionals are already serving on a number of boards, but I don't know that we utilize them enough. I want to provide them, have, have them have the opportunity to have input with how we create greater housing in this town, but also down the street from us are 3,000 USC Aiken students. And certainly with their age category, they can help us to identify some things that we can help to attract them in, the, in our downtown area, in our central business district. Thank you. Ms. Price, Aiken is often described as a charming community, but that does not necessarily mean economically strong. 
how will you reconcile the difference? Aiken is a unique and charming community. I've served as the state president of the South Carolina Municipal Association representing 270 cities in the state of South Carolina. I've also had uh, the relationship with folks in Washington and have made some comments on the hills about cities and how we grow our cities. Yes, I will uh, work to better our community through my contacts and influence there. I will involve young people in that discussion, in that planning, and help to build and make our city stronger. Mr. Osmond, same question. Aiken is often described as a charming community, but that does not necessarily mean economically strong. How will you reconcile the difference? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Growing, growing a downtown, growing businesses, growing an economy does not have to be mutually exclusive from preserving and protecting the character and charm of a city like Aiken that we love. They can coexist, and they, they will coexist. You paint the framework for which you grow your economy, for which you invite new businesses in, and that's what I intend to do. I think we grow the economy by making it easier to do business in Aiken. That's what I want to do. But, but you can certainly do that within a, a, a prescribed framework to preserve the character and charm that we all love that is Aiken. All right, thank you. Our next question, Mr. Osmond. Sure. As mayor, how do you plan to bridge the gap between some groups who do not want to see growth in Aiken versus those that do? Sure. I don't know that there's really been an advocate for growth in Aiken to sit down and explain that it benefits everybody. It's been set up here already. If you're not growing, you're dying. Um, if you're not growing, everybody who owns property in Aiken, it's not worth what it was. Okay? There's a benefit for everybody and a case to be made for it. Um, as mayor, I, th I think you have to be a strong advocate and lead. Uh, and sometimes you just have to agree to disagree. And that's all right because we can do that in Aiken. Thank you. Ms. Price, same question. As mayor, how do you plan to bridge the gap between some groups who do not want to see growth in Aiken versus those that do? I am convinced that the people that want to keep Aiken unique and charming do not understand clearly what the leaders in this Aiken want to do. I am convinced also that when people understand what the expectations are, what we plan to do, that they embrace those changes. Change is not easy for many people, and we all know that. But I think once people understand what we plan to do, they're involved in those plans, then it makes it easier. I want to go back to another question, if, I, if you don't mind, with Aiken uh, uh, perceived to be not business friendly. Um, oftentimes, uh, people say these things but Aiken is a business friendly town. It is regulations that keep uh, people from, from thinking that we want them in our city. And certainly we need businesses in our city. We want them to grow. And I wanted to, to ask, attach that to my last statement. But getting back to the groups to, uh, do not want growth, uh, some people just don't understand what we plan to do and how we plan to grow and advance our community. We need to grow. Ms. Price, the 2014 Economic Benchmark Report projects little or no, no growth in Aiken. What is the annual level of population growth as a percentage that you would like to see and that you think Aiken can manage? I read the 2014 and there's a 2015 update on that report. And the 2015 update indicates, uh, based on the benchmarking uh, by professors at USC Aiken, saying that we're, we're looking a little bit better. But because we're looking a little bit better in our growth with our housing uh, and employment, that doesn't allow us to rest on our laurels. I expect that we can grow. I think we can grow probably within the one, per two, one or two percent range. That is my estimation of our growth. But I do expect the, this town to grow with housing, with, prop, with population, and certainly with the kinds of things that we're getting ready to put in place 
that I expect greater growth in our community. Mr. Osmond, same question. The 2014 Economic Benchmark Report projects little or no growth for Aiken. What is the annual level of population growth as a percentage that you would like to see and that you think Aiken can manage? As peak, I believe Aiken was growing right at 2%. I think a 2%, 2 to 2.5% would be an aggressive growth, but I think, I think as a city we should strive for it. I think it would be great to have. Um, I can tell you as a, as a business owner, I'm glad we did the study for the Chamber and, and Economic Development Partnership, but I could have told you we were approaching that just by my numbers in our business. So most business owners here already, already knew that. But I think, I mean, if we could reach that 2%, which is, I think, about what the peak growth in Aiken was, I think it would, it would be great. I'd love to have that opportunity. Mr. Osborne, what is the first thing that you would do to stimulate the economic growth in Aiken? Please be specific. Sure. The first thing I would do is put a panel together, a committee together, made up of community members, made up of business leaders, to review the policies that we've been talking about. If they're a hindrance, they need to be removed. You know, we need to examine them. I think we have great employees in the city, okay? We just have to allow them to have the tools to say, how can we help you, as opposed to saying, I'm sorry, we can't do anything for you today. We have to put the open for business sign. Ms. Price, what is the first thing that you would do to stimulate the economic growth in Aiken? Please be specific. I would bring a group of business folks uh, in the room, get their ideas. But most importantly, I would feed on some of our talented people in the community. We have a community with well-educated, highly experienced, highly trained people. I'd want to hear what they have to say as well. Stimul stimulating the economy is not an easy thing to do, but we can look at tax adjustments. We can look at bringing more businesses in through providing incentives and looking at how we can help these small businesses uh, to survive, and I intend to work on small, small disadvantaged businesses and bringing them into, that, into our community. Uh, that being said, that would be through my relationships with the Savannah River site, the contractors out there, but looking at uh, uh, working with the Department of Energy and seeing what we can do in terms of utilizing the contracts there, the, a contract is about to get to renegotiated there, and instituting something in that contract that will help to grow businesses from those contractors but also that would help the, to stimulate the economic growth, growth within our community as well. Thank you. Mrs. Price, as mayor, what do you plan to do about bringing housing that the young professionals can afford to downtown Aiken? Dr. Johnson, that's a very good question. And that has been on my mind for quite some time. When people look at our community, they look at north, south, east, west, and they, they think of Aiken only being two blocks, north, south, east, west. There are opportunities on the east side of town and west side of town for growth. I would want a group of people to look at properties. The city of Aiken has about 100 pieces of property, 300 pieces of property that, that we own. About 100 pieces of, of those properties uh, are, uh, we're able to develop and have as livable quarters. There are also properties on the eastern side of, of the city of Aiken as you head towards Farmer's Market that are ripe for economic development. I would want investors to come in around the table. Let's talk about what we can do. In addition to, to that, look at how we can have condos or affordable apartments for, uh, for individuals at the top and retail at the bottom that will stimulate economic growth and development in our town, but in addition, have affordable housing uh, uh, for young professionals as well. I hear all the time they want to move out of their parents' home, but they can't because they can't afford $1,000 rent per month. Thank you. Mr. Osmond, same question. As mayor, what would you do to 
to, ooh, excuse me, what do you plan to do about bringing housing that the young professionals can afford to downtown Aiken? Sure, thank you, Dr. Johnson. In all three cities that we visited on an aspirational tour, there, were, there was housing available uh, for, for citizens to enjoy, who enjoyed the downtown. I think one thing we found that millennials and baby boomers both were interested in that, that very thing. I, I thought an interesting thing about it though was that it was, it was not the public sector but the private sector that put that housing in and that brought it to, to those areas. I think the first thing we have to do for a young professional for for, and for millennials is focus on economic development and bringing good paying quality jobs so that, they can, so that they can reach their dreams and so that they can afford housing. And when we have those jobs, I don't think we build, build the housing and the jobs follow. I think it's the other way around. So I'm going to focus on economic development. And I think the private sector will take care of, of the housing downtown. I, you know, it's like any other business. So we, we could certainly offer a tax, a tax incentive for a business to, to do that. But um, it, it, it is not the public sector's job for, for that. It is, it's the private sector's job. And that's what I would encourage. All right, Mr. Osmond. Yes, ma'am. What do you think is the single most important issue facing Aiken today? Sure. The single most important issue facing Aiken today, the fact that we don't have a plan in place. We don't have a plan in place. Where are we going? What if I opened a business and I didn't have a business plan? What would my one-year goal be? What would my five-year goal be? What would my 10-year goal be? You have to have a plan. We don't have a plan in place. Now, I'm going to say, I, I think piggybacking off of the aspirational tour, there are 48 people who are pumped up, and I bet more than that because we've all gone and told our friends, and hopefully they've told their friends too. I think a plan is, is going to happen in Aiken, but we have to. We have to have a strategic plan involving our citizens, involving people. So every age, every group from our equestrian community, our millennials, everybody has to have a say. We have to have a unified vision of what Aiken's going to be, and we have to move forward with it. That's the biggest challenge facing Aiken. Thank you. Ms. Price, your turn. What do you think is the single most important issue facing Aiken today? economic growth and infrastructure replacement. That is critical to our community. And what I brought with me here is an example of what we face. This is the single most problem that we have today. This is our infrastructure. And we must replace our infrastructure. This is what you're getting a lot of your water out of. This is the single most problem. I can't blame it on anyone. I'm not going to blame what has happened in the past with any, any of my predecessors. It's, it's, it's easy to point the finger if you haven't served. And I've served for 28 years with distinction along with my other council members who came before me. And every group has its own ideas of what is, what is, what is done right and what is done wrong. And certainly I can point at county council and say what they're not doing right, school board and what they're doing, not, they haven't done right because I've never served in those capacities. But I can tell you that the city of Aiken has done well with a lot of citizens' input. But we must have a 20-year plan to improve our infrastructure and it has to start right now. Ms. Price, the Aiken uh, Chamber Board of Directors unanimously supported passing the hospitality tax because it provides funding for economic vitality. Please share specific examples of how these funds should be used. Let me ask you to repeat that question, Mr. Harris, please. Sure. The Aiken Chamber Board of Directors unanimously supported passing the hospitality tax because it provides funding for economic vitality. Please share specific examples of how these funds should be used. It's a great question because I made the motion, I stand on record, of approving the hospitality tax. It's a good tax. We've seen the results of it already. If you look on the south side of town, where Starbucks is going, where TD Banks is going, and I thank the chamber too for supporting it as well, where TD Banks is going, we've used funds already for infrastructure and for stormwater for those areas. 
Recently, with the, our airport, we had an opportunity to get $2.2 million. With that tax, economic vitality, whatever we want, enterprise, we, we give it different names, but it's, it's in, in essence a tax. We managed to get $2.2 million with providing seed money that the FAA managed to give us. It is a good tax and a good example of how we can use that tax. We've managed to get in more than $200,000 already. We expect to raise $1.2 million uh, this entire year. I think we'll exceed that. But there are great things going on that we can use it for other purposes in this town. And I think give it a year and you'll look back and say, we've managed to do some great things by this one single effort. I can tell you that there have been things that some of us have, have, have opposed in, in the past, or when we look back, it's been good for this town, and this is, a, this is one decision that we will count on as being good for this town. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Osmond, the Aiken Chamber Board of Directors unanimously supported passing the hospitality tax because it provides specific funding for economic vitality. Please share specific examples of how these funds should be used. Thank you. I think the most immediate impact for all businesses in Aiken would be to reduce the business license fee. It will not only help existing businesses, but encourage new business. And more importantly, it yields a revenue neutral tax impact on our city. Mr. Osmond, as mayor, what are you specifically going to do to encourage entrepreneurial success in Aiken? What am I going to do is say it one more time, Eric, I'm sorry. What are you specifically going to do to encourage entrepreneurial success in Aiken? Four things. First of all, I'm going to oppose any, any raising of taxes. Secondly, I'm going to promote economic development. Thirdly, we're going to keep our, seats, our streets safe and we're going, to, we're going to work on infrastructure. Because you see, it all, it all works together. Nobody wants to bring a business to a town where they don't feel safe. So we have to support our public safety. Uh, economic development by, by taking and reforming our policies and making it easier for people to do business here, but also, also by recruiting and bringing businesses in and expanding existing businesses. I, I think once the sign is out, we have a great town. We have a great city. It's beautiful. It has character. People want to be here. We just have to let them know the gate is open and they're welcome. I'm going to be an advocate as mayor. I'm going to be calling people at the state level and the regional level. They're going to be tired of taking my calls. And they're going to bring people down just because I'm calling so much, maybe it'll shut me up. But guess what? It won't. We're going to keep on and we're going to grow the economy. Thank you. Ms. Price, as mayor, what are you specifically going to do to encourage entrepreneurial success in Aiken? I'm going to create a positive business climate. I also expect to create a business council and that business council will be part of the chamber in addition to some other key business leaders in this town. Creation of a business council will help to support some of the initiatives that city council decides to do. And on that business council, I expect to have young professionals. Let me just say that my contacts not only limits itself to Aiken, but state, national, and international. I can draw from my resources given my 28 years of experience. I have contacts already. I'm making contacts. As a matter of fact, yesterday, I was in Augusta, Georgia, and I talked with a person at Fort Gordon, who's one of the executive directors at Fort Gordon, alliances and we talked about cybersecurity and how we can work together in regional planning not just local planning regional planning because that's where growth happens and partner with one another and so I'm looking forward to furthering that relationship I'm I'm not waiting I've already gotten started thank you Ms. Price Describe Aiken's economy at the end of your first term, and how will your leadership get us there? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
four years, Aiken's economy will be exciting. We'll read the front pages. We'll hear the benchmark report from the University of South Carolina saying how well we've done in four years. Growth is great. Business is, is rapidly flowing. Young people are downtown. Stores are here. The hotel is open. Hotel Aiken is open. It, the town is vibrant. It will be an exciting city. We can do that through the leadership, through participation, and I'd like to see every one of you in this room involved. But we can do it. We can win in a greater way by involvement in this town. But it will be an exciting town. My children will still be here, and hopefully I will have grandchildren at that time. <laughs> but we will have a great community. Thank you. Mr. Osmond, describe Aiken's economy at the end of your first term, and how will your leadership get us there? Thank you, Dr. Johnson. First of all, I better not have any grandchildren by that time. <laughs> a Aiken is at an exciting point. We can make choices. We can lead the city in, in, into a path where our economy will grow with economic development. Our downtown can be vibrant. I think it'll be an exciting time. I, I will tell you, it would be a goal of mine. I, I was lucky enough as a young county council member to participate in an All-American City presentation. And it was a great thing and it pulled a lot of people together. And we won that award and it still hangs up proudly in the city. I don't know about you, but I think it's about time that we do something in this city and get an opportunity to go back and present again and maybe put a new banner below that one. So I'm excited. I think in four years it's going to be an exciting time. Mr. Osmond, yes. how does your political affiliation influence your decisions as mayor? Sure. Um, I mean, two, two ways on this question. First of all, philosophically, I believe that uh, the best role for government is to step away and let the private sector do, its, do what it needs to do and meet the needs of a community. But secondly, also, I mean, we live in a state with a, with a we have a Republican county council. We have Republican majorities in both bodies, and our statewide officers are all, all Republican. That doesn't mean that you can't work across the aisle, because of course you can. But I already have those relationships. I think that'll help also that I can pick up a phone and, and make a call for someone that I need to. Um, but yeah, I think philosophically, uh, I mean, I, I named my kid Reagan for heaven's sake. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty conservative guy, and I, I, I believe the role of government should be limited. I, I think if you if you grow the private sector, the government the government's role will be less. But if you grow government, you're going to stifle the private sector. Thank you, Ms. Price. How does your political affiliation influence your decisions as mayor? We live in a town with a population of a little over thirty thousand people. When I sit on city council and vote for anything in this town, whether it's the budget, whether it's needs for our public safety, I don't raise my hand and say, I'm voting as a Democrat. We're too small for that. We don't need that in our town. This is a town that I'm proud of. And I don't, I don't know people or want to connect myself with people that live and work by party lines. This is a town that I have grown to love, my family, my husband, and we are united. Like it or not, we are united. And we can't, st we we can't address ourselves or see ourselves as Republicans or Democrats. It only divides us. We have to focus on the issues, and, and I think that for the most part, Council does that. We focus on the issues that will better and elevate our town. What a great thing that I can do in this city when I go to other cities and say that my town is united. When one side hurts, the other, does, the other feels the pain as well. That's a united community that works together. Thank you, Ms. Price. 
Do you believe Aiken is heading in the right direction or the wrong direction and why? We touched on this question earlier where the USC Aiken study uh, indicated that Aiken may be in trouble. We're doing a lot better. The study also indicated that we are not growing. We can develop a strategic plan because we are growing. Our housing market is a lot better. But our strategic plan will be used as a guide to direct us in a positive way. I think that with the plans of greater economic uh, vitality, with the hospitality tax, with business involvement, and as I watch other cities uh, that, uh, that I'm connected with, whether it's in Washington State or Oak Ridge, Tennessee, I see those towns growing, and they're growing by working together, but they're also growing by bringing other people to the table as well. Uh, to give you a classic example, we have Oak Ridge, Tennessee, uh, that has, uh, uh, there's a contract there of $300 million with one of the contractors out there. They have grown as a, as a result of getting greater involvement with small businesses through the contractor there. And certainly we can grow our city, even though we're okay now, we can do a lot better, and that's what I look forward to doing. Mr. Osmond, do you believe Aiken is heading in the right direction or wrong direction, and why? If you'd asked me this question a year ago, I would have said wrong direction. If you'd asked me this question a month ago, I would have probably said wrong direction. The aspirational city tour, though, it made, it made a difference in the way I view this question. It really did. Uh, there were the majority of city council were on that, uh, other community leaders. And there's an excitement and a buzz about working a plan. And, and I would say that is the beginning. So listen, I'm gonna say, say that maybe we're turning the corner and we're going in the right direction. And what we need now is a strong leader to move it forward. Someone with some new vision, some new ideas. But I'm gonna say we've turned the corner right now. We're at that pivotal point. And we're gonna start going in that right direction, Charlie. Mr. Osmond. There is a segment of the community that believes that the city of Aiken is not pro-business. Pro Do you agree? Why or why not? Um, I think there's valid reasons why they think we're not pro-business. I think when, whenever they go in with a, when we bring an entrepreneur, an investor, a new business person to our community, and they go in and, and they're greeted with a list of all the hurdles that they have to jump, and, it, and especially, it, you know, not, a lot of young entrepreneurs and, and people who are just beginning, they don't have a law firm to go through these papers. They need, it needs to be streamlined, and that process needs, needs to be shorter. So, I mean, I, I think it's very, I think it's unfortunate, but we can say, yeah, at this point, we are not business friendly. And I think that's one reason why we're experiencing 0% growth. Thank you. Ms. Price. There is a segment of the community that believes that the city of Aiken is not pro-business. Do you agree? Why or why not? That segment is accurate. I'm not going to deny that. And I will say that we, as I said earlier, we have process improvements that we're working on as we speak. There are inhibitors. There are barriers. And we're fixing those, those barriers. Is it going to happen immediately? No. But I've been in contact with some of the department uh, heads, as well as our city manager and staff, who, is, who are fully aware of those barriers. We want to make it better. We want businesses to come here. And we don't want people, and, and I know this is happening, there are people that are so frustrated with our system that they've just pretty much given up. And after they've come uh, to us time and time again, they, they see little results, uh, then they will go ahead and do it their way. We will, make, we will make those changes. And I am certain that we will make it easier for businesses to see that we want them here, we want them to have a profit, because I understand budgets, I've, I've managed a number of budgets at Savannah Riverside. I understand budgets and I understand profits 
and understand losses. We do not want them losing money. Um, if I've got a minute, or 30 seconds, talking about business, I want to get uh, to prime stake and, and the university uh, in terms of how we can make, how this town is, this town is business friendly and businesses want to help. Prime Stake said to me that I want more young people to come to my business. I want more professors to come to my business. And to do that, this is Randy. Randy said, Leslie, on Monday and Tuesday, I will, I will create a menu and reduce my prices in half if I can get businesses to come, those students and professors to, to come to my restaurant. That's a way of how we can help businesses as well. Thank you. Have a long one. Many young people report some difficulty finding jobs in Aiken area that pay well enough to leave them feeling financially secure. As a result, these young people are relocating to more urban, larger areas where jobs are more plentiful. What can be done to bring new growth and jobs to the Aiken area, making it attractive enough to entice the young professionals to relocate or those already here to remain in Aiken versus larger, more populated areas? Is that my question? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat that for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paraphrasing. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard for young professionals to stay here knowing that they don't get paid enough to really live here. So what can be done to bring new growth and jobs to the Aiken area, making it attractive enough to entice the young professionals to relocate, or those already here to remain in Aiken versus larger, more populated cities? In, in new growth, we have to attract more high-tech jobs, number one. Young people want to come here. We have some in the audience right now that want to remain here. Oftentimes, the process with employers take too long, and I know that because I serve on the, the, the Department of Energy and Environmental Management Advisory Board, and I was in Washington last week, and we were talking about the processes of employment, given the Department of Energy Will, use close to will lose close to half of their workforce. And those folks can walk out the door right now because of their age category. Uh, given that, they're looking for young workers. But the process takes too long. No young person with skills will wait, or, wait around almost a year before they hear anything from an employer. And certainly, we can, we can help them to uh, reduce that timeline. We must have things going on in our town to interest our young people, but to attract businesses as well. Arts, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of the arts and our young people enjoying arts and culture in our town. Um, there are other things regarding our educational system that we can help with. Our university, I keep saying, we can provide reasonable price housing with condos for our young people to ha help them to stay here and we can have we can bring jobs here that can help our young people enjoy a, great, a greater quality of life in our community. Thank you. Mr. Osmond. Yes. Many young people report some difficulty finding jobs in the Aiken area that pay well enough to leave them feeling financially secure. As a result, these young people are relocating to more urban, larger areas where jobs are more plentiful. What can be done to bring new growth and jobs to the Aiken area, making it attractive enough to entice the young professionals to relocate, or those already here to remain in Aiken versus larger, more populated cities? Right. We have to double down on our economic development. We have to double down on creating a culture that fosters that business. We have to work with our regional economic development professionals. We have to work with Department of Commerce. We have to work with these, these frameworks because that's who's being contacted. But we have to aggressively make ourselves available to it. We have to take calls. We have to, we have to meet with and support. When people bring us projects, we have to support those projects. Okay? We have to trust our economic development professionals. As, as mayor, I would, I would try to lead that charge. I had the privilege of serving as vice chair to uh, Chairman Ronnie Young at the county. And there's nobody in, that I know who's more, more committed to bringing economic development to the, to the county than Ronnie Young. I think because of that relationship and our past working together, I think we could work to bring that same thing to the city of Aiken. And that's what I would aggressively do. 
All right, Mr. Osmond, you were likely prepared to answer a question today that we have not asked you. What question do you wish we would have asked you? <laughs> <laughs> and what is the answer to that question? Uh, yeah. When they say they're going to give you the questions and then they give you a list like three sheets long, it's like good grief. Um, <laughs> What question did I want? I, I didn't memorize the questions. I just kind of, uh, so yeah, okay. Um, I'm trying to think over what, your, what the questions were. I guess, um, I think the question that I wish you would ask, are we done? Is that what we're saying here? Or, <laughs> the question, I, and I'm on the clock, I'm sorry. I'm, I think the question I wish you would ask was, was the one that was listed about unifying Aiken, about there's a perception of different port parts of our city. And I think that's a very good question that, that the next mayor needs, needs to address. Um, I believe we need to have a seamless city. I think you need to be able to go from Carlson Park to downtown Aiken to Aiken Estates to Jim Lakes to Woodside. And everybody in those communities should feel safe. I think they should all have opportunities. And that's what I would like to work for as mayor. So that's the question, Fran. Thank you. Ms. Price. You too are likely to have been prepared to answer a question today that we have not asked. What question do you wish we would have asked you? And what is your answer to that question? We didn't address Aiken being a bike friendly city. And I expected that question to be asked. There are several others as well, but the bike friendly. Uh, because of my motion to promote Aiken as a bike friendly town. Um, this is a town that we uh, can make uh, some improvements in many ways and have connectors and trails, uh, trails that leads to the woods, but certainly that will help uh, to make our town more attractive, uh, more friendly to a lot of folks, and enhance it even more. That was our final question uh, for, the, for the evening. I was trying to move into our concluding statements, but before we do, I'd, I'd like to just stop and pause and, and uh, tell our, both of our candidates outstanding job this evening. That was not easy. That was 17 very difficult questions, and I think they all handled it very well. How about a round of applause? <laughs> Okay, for the closing uh, comments, Ms. Price, uh, if you'll start us off, please. Thank you, Bart. I have enjoyed serving the citizens of this city for 28 years. In addition to my 40 years experience at Savannah Riverside in human resources, in public affairs, in managing education programs, in small, small disadvantaged business programs, in philanthropic giving, in equipment reuse programs, and serving as a liaison working with local, state, and national officials. I started at the bottom and worked my way up into the manage managerial position that prepared me for leadership. I didn't have anything to inherit. The majority of the planning and growth and prosperity of this community are tied to much planning by city leaders. I am one of them. I was elected by my peers as the statewide president of the State Municipal Association of South Carolina, representing 270 cities in this state. I have addressed issues in Washington, D.C. that impacted cities across the country and have authored several publications. I have great relationships with many departments in Washington. I fought and opposed unfunded mandates coming to our state. It is said that great cities are measured by the quality of life of the people who live in it. Making a difference in people's lives is important to me. By working together, we can make our city greater. I have experience where it counts, and I, and I have gained it in my hometown. I am proud of my record, but I am not done yet. As your next mayor, I will offer new ideas for innovative thinking and growth and prosperity for all. 
our work to improve the quality of life, and that means good jobs, creating a climate of innovation and entrepreneurship. I will, I pro I will propose eliminating taxes on startup businesses for one year, in addition to business incentives. As your next mayor, I will work to help people understand the importance of working together. And as your next mayor, you have to work tirelessly to gain the confidence of, of every part of this city. My friend Mayor Weeks served for 40 years. My friend Fred Kavanaugh served for 24 years. I'm not asking you for 40 years. <laughs> I'm not asking you for 24 years. I'm only asking you for four years. Give Leslie Price four years, and you will look back and say, wow, what a woman. Thank you, Ms. Price. Mr. Osmond, your closing comments, please. Thank you. The mission statement and purpose for any city government should be to make its city the best. We should want to be the best. This effort is accomplished by constantly seeking and acting on ways to improve the quality of life for all the people and all the citizens who live here. I believe Aiken can be the best city. I believe we can improve the quality of life for all of our citizens. And I know we can accomplish it by working together. The Osmond plan is simple with four points in it. First, we're going to keep taxes low and create a business-friendly environment. Secondly, we're going to actively work with regional and state economic pro development professionals to bring new jobs, new quality, high-paying jobs to our area and to our city. Third, we're going to keep our streets safe. We're going to work with public safety and make sure that they have the resources they need so that every neighborhood in our city feels safe. Fourth, Speaking of roads, we're going to keep our roads maintained, and we're going to work on that infrastructure that's been talked about tonight. And I think that pipe may have come out of the street in front of my cleaners because I've seen it before. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it, it's a major issue. I mean, I mean it, absolute, it absolutely is. It, it's been ignored for way too long, and, and whoever's elected is going to have to work on infrastructure. It's going to be an important issue with our, with our city. These four issues are what's going to focus, but I'm going to tell you, I believe, I believe in four years we'll be making a run for that All-American City again, and I look forward to that. I'd appreciate your support, I'd appreciate your vote, and I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Osmond. And there's no doubt that both of you love Aiken very much, and we certainly appreciate your willingness to serve our community. We have a small token of our appreciation for you joining us this evening. Do we have to claim this on our uh, forms? I think, I think we probably have. Thank you. You know, both of you have a long road ahead, a lot of work to be done between now and election time, and maybe this tin of candy will help to keep you going when the going gets tough. <laughs> also, thank you to our panelists this evening for representing the Aiken Chamber and the young professionals, and thank you to our audience for taking the time to come out this evening and participate in our forum. We hope this forum has helped to answer some questions you may have had and that the information shared tonight will help you make an informed decision on election day. Before we adjourn, I have a few announcements. Uh, the City of Aiken uh, Channel 4 on Atlantic Broadband will be rebroadcast tonight's mayoral forum at the following times. Friday, tomorrow, October 9th at 7 p.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Sunday at 3 p.m. and 9.30. Monday, October 12th, 6.30 a.m. and 7 p.m., and Tuesday, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., in the event you'd like to watch this one more time. Also, on election night, the city will have a special edition of Aiken This Week, with live coverage of the mayoral election beginning at 7.30 and continuing until the final unofficial results are in. The program will contain a special panel of Tim O'Brien, Mayan Sector from the Aiken Standard and USC Aiken Professor Emeritus Bob Bosch analyzing and discussing the election. The program will be streamed live on the City of Aiken's YouTube channel and on www.akenstandard.com.
www.thepatriotsocialist.com. Finally, please remember your opinion matters, but your vote is what actually counts. Please get out and vote on November 3rd. This concludes our event this evening. Thank you so much for being here, and good night.